Good evening, everyone. My name is Ali Montezer. Uh, I'm irrigation and water management advisor, BGC Cooperative Extension in Imperial, Riverside, and lately uh, San Diego County, uh, which means I'm covering a large area and multiple crops, very diverse commodities and climate. But my connection with vineyard is not only about my irrigation expertise. It com comes from my childhood because my father was a farmer. I'm coming from a family farm. Uh, and he, he used to produce table and uh, raisin grape. So I grew up in a vineyard just next to our house. We had 10 acres vineyard and a steep part of my best memories are growing up in that vineyard. So with that introduction, uh, I would like to, to talk with you a little bit about uh, irrigation tools and management practices in vineyard. Uh, one simple approach for irrigation management in vineyard is to look at this uh, grave one water demand by the crop season. But it is very simple approach for irrigation management. As you can see in this graph, so about 70% of water demands for vineyard, it's happening from fruit set to harvest. About 15% from uh, bud break to fruit set, and then other 14 to 15% from harvest to leaf out. So this is very simple. If we have this trend and try to irrigate the vineyard uh, based on this, uh, this graph, probably we are doing good. Next, please. So it means if we have, if we need to apply 12 inches for our vineyard, and we have vineyard wine with six uh, by nine uh, feet spacing, we need totally about 400 gallon per wine. About 60 gallon per, per wine comes to, to before fruit set, and then other 340 gallon per wine is for, this, for the rest of uh, the season. So which means it's very important if we can do a good job with irrigation management in that part of the year. Next, please. But the story of irrigation is not that simple. As I mentioned, that was a very simple approach for irrigation management because there are a lot of variables and drivers contribute to irrigation management. That's why we really need proper irrigation system design and installation and regular maintenance. They are very important for irrigation management. Besides that, we need proper irrigation scheduling, depending on the soil condition, depending on the water, depending on the weather condition, and of course, through the stock and canopy uh, training. So they are all contribute to irrigation management, and that's why it, they make very uh, tough to, to do a good and proper and efficient management. Uh, so if we have all those information, our job is to apply water, to match applied water and water. That's effective and efficient irrigation management. That's the goal. Next, please. So one of the issues we all, we all know about the water distribution uniformity, it comes from a lot of damages. It comes from plug emitters, uh, hose screen, and valves. Next, please. But the good thing is we can manage that part of the, the issue and improve irrigation uh, efficiency with pre-season inspection. There are a lot of things in winter we can do it because we can see very well the system and we can, we can fix or replace the filter station if we need. And during, during season also, we need to do a lot of uh, repair probably and maintenance. If we do this, we can maintain the distribution uniformity in a desired level. That's one, you know, one point. Next, please. But when it comes to sloping land, the story is different. We have different variable, variability in sloping lands. So we know about variable uh, water pressure. All the time on the top, we have less pressure. On the bottom, we have more pressure. This is, it can create some difficulty in water distribution uniformity and reduce the water distribution uniformity itself. We also have some variability in water demand based on the orientation. If you have in a sloping land, south facing a slope, so your evapotranspiration or water demand is higher than east sloping or even east you know or even south sloping so the the row orientation is a is an important parameter here next please so to resolve this issue uh, the solution is to create as many different irrigation blocks as we can and put them every of the, those blocks in one valve and do the irrigation management scheduling for each of those individually 
So it means we can also manage this in a sloping lens. Next, please. So this is some, some result I would like to show you why the slope is that important. So we did this research in, in, in the El Dorado in 2013 with Dr. Richard Snyder, UC Davis biometrologist. So we had north-facing north slope 8% and south-facing 14% slope. Next, please. And this is the result. So as you can see, the, the actual ET or evapotranspiration was 26% higher in the sloping uh, uh, slope in the south slope uh, uh, facing the slope, which is very significant. So if we don't consider this and we irrigate south facing and north facing, the result will be, will be this. We are over irrigating on the north, under irrigating on the south. It also can affect your wine uh, quality perhaps, because you are doing some deficit irrigation on the in part of the field. Next please. So the other issue here for the sloping lab is a soil wetting pattern. So the soil wetting pattern is not sym symmetrical in, in sloping lands. Next, please. So, which means if you want to do, install soil moisture sensor, is very important where we can install because of this non symmetrical uh, pattern. So it's recommended to install it. I can, you cannot see it here, but you. It is recommended to install the soil moisture sensor in downstream of the trunk, about, about 15 to 18 inches away from the trunk, and about 4 to 5 inches away from uh, uh, emitters. Next, please. So to do an effective irrigation management, we need information and knowledge. Basically, we need soil moisture uh, status and also crop water use and evapotranspiration. If we can do monitor these two, we can do a great job for irrigation scheduling. Next, please. And, and uh, ET is very important in, uh, in San Diego because of the topography we have in this county. If you go to Imperial Valley, the ET doesn't change in the county, you know, just a few percentage. But in this county, uh, ET significantly changed based on geography from somewhere to, to other, uh, other place. I uh, graph this, uh, uh, this data, of, it shows the average monthly ETO for uh, three locations, for Fall Brook, for Escondido, and Pine Valley. We obviously see the differences. That's the potential ET. Next, please. Just let's talk about July in these different locations. If you are talking in, about July, the crop water needs for the same crop, the same canopy, the same soil type, the same irrigation system. In Pine Valley, could be about 40% more than Fall Brook and about 25% more in Escondido. So it means we really need to look at ET for irrigation management. So we cannot advise anything, for example, for wine grape in different parts of the, the valley. We need to look at this first. Next, please. So to, to estimate ET, we use this simple uh, equation, very simple. But the, the information, we, the ETO is coming from a CMS station. We have CMS station, several, in this location, in, 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 in this county. So the KC is individual for each crop. It depends on many factors. It depends on, on the light absorption. It depends on the wetness. It depends on the, your soil type, irrigation management, and frequency. All those, and of course, canopy training, all those impact, uh, and they have some impact on KC value. Next, please. So, uh, in, I think in San Diego County, it's much better to use these tools rather than the uh, CIMIS stations. And the reason is because we have a you know, specific topography. So, the special CIMIS uh, use the, the weather station of CIMIS. They integrated with remote sensing and topography maps. And every day, they develop a map, ETO map, for the entire state of California. So, your ranch is part of that. So if, if CMS station is far away from your vineyard, is, you know, the best option is to look at special CMS for your irrigation management. Next, please. And it's very simple. You go to CMS station, the CMS website, you look at for a, a, a special report by coordinates, you create an account for yourself, you provide just one email, that's a free account, and you provide the, the coordinates of the, your vineyard or 
avocado orchard or anything you have, uh, put, you put there. Every day at 6 a.m., they send you an email and they provide you the ETO of your vineyard for the last seven days. It means you don't even need to go to the website anymore. They provide you through email. And that, I think that, that, uh, that information is very useful for you. Next, please. So when it comes to crop coefficient, this is the typical crop coefficient we have for wine, for, for grape wine. So after leaf out, so is in the minimum value, about 0.2. When it goes to full canopy, it's changing between 0.68 to 8, depending on the, on the canopy training and, and the many other, uh, other uh, factors. And then in the late season comes back to 0.4 average. So this, is, this trend change over the season, every year. Next, please. This is another source. It shows a crop coefficient for wine grape for every two weeks, the average values from March to October. So you can also consider this crop coefficient for wine grape. Next, please. But one of the other tools is very important for irrigation management is soil moisture. So the job soil moisture can do, no other tools can do it because soil moisture can answer this specific and critical question. So how is the water status in the early season? This is the question every tree crop producer has it. So how is the water status? When I should to start irrigation? This is a very important question. So soil moisture can answer this question. When is the right time for my irrigation? The first irrigation and the other irrigation, the entire season. Is the soil profile full after each irrigation? What is the length of irrigation time? When I should stop? And does, uh, do I need to change my irrigation practice? They are all critical questions, and soil moisture sensor can answer them. I think one, uh, one, one question you might ask, I think that's, an, that's not the right question, is which sensor probably I, can, uh, I should use? Because there are a bunch of soil moisture sensors and telemetry devices in the market. I think this is not the right question you ask. Because every soil motion sensor on the market, from less expensive to more expensive, they can all answer this question. So which means you don't need to take care of that. What you need to take care of that is how you install, where you install, how you read it, how you interpret it, and how you use it for irrigation scheduling. I think that's the part, the, the important part, not the soil moisture itself. Next, please. So, uh, we plan to do some research uh, for the upcoming year. I'm, I'm hoping we can start this project. Next, please. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of this information are very regional information, which means even though I, I talk about crop coefficient, but those crop coefficient develop somewhere else. Of course, the crop coefficient should be close to that, but the practices we have here are different, which means we need some regional information if we want to do a better job for irrigation management. So we try to develop some of this information in regional. We will work with two local vineyards, one grape specifically. So we, we try to develop a comprehensive data set for this. So we will use residual energy balance method with, with surface renal and eddy covariance to measure the actual crop water used in these two vineyards with different slopes. We will have a, uh, multiple depth uh, uh, soil moisture in different locations to do some water balance modeling and of course leaf stem water potential. So uh, I heard you know salinity should be an issue in the future. So we will monitor salinity and apply water as well. Next please. Uh, but since I will start a, a large scale project for irrigation management in avocado very soon, so my, my staff will be around. That's why I'm thinking to do some drone evaluation as well. So remote sensing and ground-based data gives us a comprehensive data set for irrigation management. As you might know, there is also a tool, uh, IRISAT, that's, uh, you know, that, that, that it provides satellites, NDVI, and based on that, you can do some, some irrigation management. We try to, based on this information, we will develop, do some verification for that IRISAT tool. So if we can verify that it is sad for the cropping system we have here, I think that's a big move and big help for our growers to do as irrigation management through satellite and very user-friendly too. So this is the objective uh, we try to do the next uh, two years. And with that, I'm going to uh, stop here. And I would be happy to answer any questions.
Any immediate questions?